Improbability Theory, Part 2. Victor, you are not just one of my best clients. You, you are my friend. I remember that you helped me in an hour of need. That's the reason why I did you a favor, gave you a big loan at the smallest interest. As I said, at my own risk. Thank you so much, Kolya. But the loan must be paid back, Victor. And you stubbornly refused to do it for a long time. I waited for as long as I could. I just groaned and kept reminding you. When, Victor? When? It's coming. That was your answer. Mm. You'll get it very soon. And then, suddenly I faced an audit. And that's a very unpleasant thing to go through, Victor. Do you really want them to cut off my head? What are you talking about? Of course I don't. Then pay the money back. I can't. I've got no money. You're not a child, are you? Find the money. Get another loan somewhere. Borrow. Do I have to teach you? I've tried, really, but I can't make it happen, honestly. I'm sorry, then. I hate to tell you, you have exactly one week to pay back the loan, including all interest and also penalties. And then, Victor? Then what? Then we have a different conversation. Koya, wait. Koya, Koya. I have a meeting with my partners in Shanghai in a week, maybe. You only have one week. If you don't give the money back in a week, well, you've understood me. Nothing personal, Victor. As the saying goes, nothing personal, just business. <clears throat> Let's go. You've got to be kidding me. Olga. Olga, open the door. I know you're home. The concierge told me. Didn't he tell you I don't want to see you? Olga, stop it, please. I beg you, open the door. I need to talk to you about some very important business. No way. Olga, please, stop it, please. Open the door. Don't be a child. Olga. 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 Why are you banging on the door? I'm not banging. Just ringing the bell. Get the hell out of here! Is it so hard to understand? Olga, your neighbors are snarling at me. Or rather, your neighbor's dog. If you don't open this door, then... My God. I'm sorry. <laughs> and here I thought we were living in a high-class building. Let's go, punk and puss, to the fresh air. I don't care about your bonuses. Do you think I was making this collection for the money? I know, Olga. I know. I'm proud of it. Believe me. It's just the, the compensation for your talent. The financial compensation. That's all. Nothing more than that. What does it have to do with anything? It doesn't matter as long as our relations don't destroy our business. <laughs> What's so funny? You contributed all of your soul. I contributed my money. And the Chinese will turn it into an international brand. All this will pay off in spades. Isn't that what we always dreamed about, Olga? Look, Victor, we went separate ways. And your passionate monologue about, I'm ruined, they'll tear my head off soon, was very cute and all, but... My inspiration went away. The muse is gone, is that clear? I have no time for it. No, it's not clear to me, Olga. I can't understand. Really, please, explain it to me. What do you mean me. it's not clear? What is not clear to you? Is it not clear that I just can't physically stand to be in the same oh, room God. as you? That it's very difficult for me to see you? Olga, just stop. It hurts stop. me, Victor. It just hurts me. Stop saying that, Olga. Please. Well, I understand you're punishing me, and you're right. You're right a thousand times. But... But just think, it's not beneficial for either of us. Just think clearly, okay? You'll ruin me completely. I mean, is that what you want? And how are you going to find someone like me? Someone who's completely honest and... Generous and someone who believes in you like I do, huh? It's a matter of time, and I don't see things the way you do. I think everything will fall into place over time, and I don't just mean work. What do you want? What do you want? Come on, just say it. Let's not play the guessing game. You'll see. In time, how lucky you were. And now you have to go. Come on. And don't look at me like that. I look at you and feel nothing. No emotions. So come on, Victor. Get out. Go. No. 
And you can lose my phone number too. Excuse me. Goodbye, sir. Hello, I'm listening to you. Madam Alia, my name is Gregory. I'd like to make an appointment. Heart problems, you know. Are you available? Wait a minute, let me check. The 16th or maybe the 18th? Does that work? And what about the 17th? Oh, you know what? I have an opening at 3 p.m. Perfect. Then I'll come on the 17th at 3 p.m. Thank you so much. See you there. Gregory. Strange. The voice sounds familiar. Carcouche, do you know where I could have met him? Hmm? <laughs> Madam Alvina. Desperate to see his beloved for the last time in his life, he threw himself into her poorly lit bedroom and pulled the bedspread off the untouched bed. Then he exclaimed, Where's my brandy? Where's my bloody brandy? My goodness, why are you yelling? The bottle of brandy was there. Where is it? Why? Why am I not able to find anything here? I don't know. It's just here somewhere. Why do you need the brandy? What happened? I have some problems at work. Okay, but you shouldn't drink. It's not good for you. You have problems with your liver. I have no problems with my liver. I've never had. I'll decide what to do myself. Uh, it's what mine. I use it for cooking. Don't touch it. So take the salty, dirty water. Where's my brandy? Well, we'll find it right now. It's here somewhere, and I don't know. It's Did here you somewhere. Did you look here? Victor, are you kidding me? Here it is. Well, why is it there? I left it over here. But Give how do that. I know? Give me a glass. Here you go. Thank you. Well, what happened? A lot of things happened. That's why I wanted to come home, relax, and have some brandy. Instead, I have to spend an hour and a half looking. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's hey, enough. You'll make don't yourself sick. Don't touch my brandy. Just leave me alone. throw all the treasures of the world at your feet, Richard said kneeling down on one knee. His voice trembled, his eyes filled with tears. Penelope uttered a quiet moan and fell into his embrace. <sighs> eat more, my pretty, eat it. Take some bread, take it, my little dear. Don't hurry, eat it. <gasps> oh, what a surprise! I can't believe Nikolai Pavlov came to visit me. Hello, Alia. I was afraid you wouldn't recognize me. Fifteen years have passed after all. Sixteen. Sixteen. Well, the mathematical spirit is still with you. Come in, come Thank in. You. Oh, dear. What brings you here, Nikolai? A little bird told me about you. <laughs> Please. Yes, thank you. I met Boria Schenkman some days Aha, ago. Aha, he taught me mathematical analysis. Yes, that's right. Well, <laughs> and he <laughs> told me that you became a very famous paranormalist. So <laughs> I thought you'd help me out for old time's sake. How so? As a first step, defeat the demon alcohol. Alia, I oh. must confess I'm dying. <laughs> I already consulted doctors, tried unconventional methods, visited the monasteries, and nothing helps. So it looks like you are my last hope. My dearest friend Nikolai, I've thought about you so often. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see you and thank you. What for, Alia? What do you mean? For your theory of probability. I learned it well and followed your lead. I don't understand what you're talking about. But how can that be? Do you remember why you were kicked out of the university? 
I can see you do. You were kicked out because during the entrance examinations, you played the role of an admission officer and promised the parents to help their children. Hmm? And if somebody entered, you took money. And if somebody didn't answer, you said, I did my best. You took money depending on the result, yes? And so what's your point? The point of this is that one day one of the parents reported you and everything went out the window. Your whole career was for nothing. The career. Three years in prison. Mm -hmm. All my life is for nothing. I can't believe that. Listen, I have the same story. In the 90s, everything went down the drain. I had nothing but food for thought. And then, Nikolai, I remembered your theory for probability. And it helped me, and I thought, Alia, why not? Well, a university student may be accepted or may not. Same deal with the ill. He may recover or may not. And a wayward hubby may return home or may not. Well, you were always smart. Oh, smart is not the word. Yeah. Yes, then I bought piles of books on the occult, created an image for myself, and now I work depending on the result as well. If I yield them, they give me money. If I don't succeed, well, I'm sorry. I did my best. Wait, 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 wait. In other words, you're saying you can't do anything? Anything at all? Absolutely nothing. As thick as two short planks. I don't know a thing. But at the same time... But at the same time, I live in Clover. Thank you for everything, teacher. But unfortunately, I cannot help you. I can give you some money. Do you need some? Yes. Entirely for the theory of probability. Thank you. <laughs> Alia, it would be better in dollars. Or, God save us all, people will learn that you're just a swindler. I'm sorry, but you could lose all your clients. You shouldn't have said that, Nikolai. You shouldn't. My clients will never leave me. You may find yourself behind bars one day, so take the money and we're done, okay? Olga. Olga, I would like to make you an offer. I'm offering you half the profits from sales of all of our clothing. I'm offering you 50%. You must admit, nobody will make such a fantastic offer. So? Well, isn't that a great gesture? Isn't that proof enough of the love that I have for you? Huh? Ah, oh, never mind. No, 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 no. Olga, for the sake of everything that we had between us, it's impossible for me to forget about our love. I beg you, I beg you, please help me. Meet me halfway. Help me, and you'll learn how generous I can be. Oh, oh, Olga! Olga! Okay, follow that car. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We had peace, love, and understanding for two days, much like a honeymoon, you can't even imagine. And now, Sveta, it's terrible what's happening. He comes home from work uptight, nervous. Whatever I do irritates him. Listen, honestly, I don't even know what was better. When he was roaming around elsewhere or now that he's sitting at home hating me. That's fine. These are phantom pains. He cut off his redhead and it hurts him. Oh. Okay, so live your life oh. and be thankful that he doesn't leave. I'm thankful and I live. Mm -hmm. He's having problems at work, in my opinion. He has problems? I have problems. I am going to get married and I haven't even chosen a wedding gown yet. A skin-colored lace dress or a lilac dress? Here we are. What do they want? Traffic Inspector, Senior Lieutenant Trofimenko. Good afternoon, officer. What's the matter? I thought I parked in the right place. Drove carefully, did nothing illegal. Your license, please. Oh, you just want to get to know me. Why didn't you tell me that in the first place? The license, here you are. The registration. And open the hood of your car, please. Oh. I have never been asked to open the hood so persistently before. Here you are. Even I don't know where to mm -hmm. find fault. <sighs> uh, 
I'm sorry, miss, but I'm afraid your car is on record as a stolen vehicle. I didn't know that the car was stolen. They told me the car was fine. What kind of stories are you telling me? Who told you that? Aram's brother told me. Who's Aram? The manager of the car service center. Well, it's clear what kind of car company you work for. So tell me, you gangster, did you work hard at wiring cars or what? So that I don't steal cars. I hang around. I drive cars to other places. That's all. Mm -hmm. Drive cars? Yes. And now I'm disgraced for good. Sweda, I tried for our sake, for the wedding's sake. We're kind of a couple legally. We have expenses. What wedding? A prison sentence is waiting for you, isn't it? Sweda, I'm sorry. How should I have known it was stolen? You killed me. Shot me dead. I was going to marry you in a lilac floor length You're dress. jumping on me. But you shouldn't, because I did it for the sake of our love. Do you understand? Shut up! What? Let everybody know. Let everybody know that there's a woman out there for me and that I would do anything for her. I am not that woman. Well, a woman, it's a figure of speech. I'll get a, I'll get a tattoo on my chest in prison that'll say, Sveta, forever. You're delusional, you need help. Sveta, Sveta. What a surprise. I've already asked you not to call me, but now it seems I need to demand that you not spy on Olga, me. Olga, what are you doing here? Aren't you pregnant? Do you know what toxicosis means? It means that if I was pregnant, I would be sick of seeing you. Olga, stop clowning around. Listen, okay? If there's something really wrong with you, mm -hmm. if you feel sick or something, or if then you I need any help... Then I have a mom in Baskud and a bottle of champagne in the fridge. Don't worry. Olga, why are you doing this? Wait, if you're really pregnant, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to drink alcohol at all. Well, only a doctor in charge can say that. Hey, I'm being serious. I just want to know how you're feeling. How does an unwanted woman feel? Absolutely free. Yes, hello. Hello, are you there? I can't hear you, speak up. Basia. Basia, is that you? Either this Ilya Praskovia was insufferably lucky, or she possessed unique abilities. However, most of her patients recovered, Colonel, and they're alive and kicking, as they say, for better or for worse. There were some instances of death, though. I recently found one which suits us, so to speak. For example, Grigory Garshev died on January 17th last year, born 1939, retired Major General former lecturer of the military academy. It is stated here that he is survived by the following family members. His widow, 
Militisa Garsheva, maiden name Ugriumova, their daughter, Maria Garsheva, both are retired, and the grandson, Vasya Grigorovich Garshev. He took his grandfather's name, by the way. I don't consider the women to be suspicious, Colonel, because of their age, but the grandson, the grandson deserves our attention. Yes. Yes, why? Colonel, at his workplace, they've given him a very positive reference. Never late, doesn't drink or smoke, a vegetarian. Hmm, yes, looks suspicious. Reserved, secretive, cautious, and heady. He's really reserved. Doesn't even have a girlfriend. Almost no friends. What do you mean? Alone, like a lonely shepherd. He had a short affair with Kira Landina, with Ilya's help. And right after the death of his grandfather, they broke up. And how do you know? Let's just say I heard it through the grapevine. Kira, hello. Hello. Where were you yesterday? Did you go somewhere or what? Uh-huh. I went into the city to buy some food and stuff. Oh, food and stuff. So, how is it there? In the city, anything new? Nothing new. They say it will all go the old way. Oh, the old way. That's good. Uh, stability's <coughs> fine. Uh, Kira. An investigator came to see me yesterday. Danilov, he seemed like a serious man. Questioned me about Proskovia's patients. Did he ask about someone specifically? Well, I didn't remember that much. Only Gregory met Vivich. He died a year ago. The funeral was in the winter, remember? Garshev Jr. met Kira right before his grandfather met with Ilya. Colonel, that's what I thought, anyway. Turns out Kira recommended her mentor to the family as a healer. As soon as the grandfather died, the relations between Kira and Vasily immediately stopped, as if there had been nothing between them. Yes, and now she's keeping silent, as if she didn't know. What do you think, then? Revenge? For the grandfather? Yes, and why not, Colonel? First he kills the real culprit, and then he starts killing other faith healers. So, in my opinion, he's nuttier than a fruitcake. The paper shows information of two more psychics and fortune tellers. Kira, please come in. Make yourself at home. Come here, sit Thank down. You. Sit down. Take a seat, my dear. How could I forget you? No way. Mm. I remember how Vasya loved you then. Mm. He suffered a lot, you know. And then, Kira, it was you who brought my father to Ilya when we found out he had cancer. Yes. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Pavlovna didn't manage to help him. Here you go. Thank you. It was not your fault, Kira. We turned to doctors too late, fourth stage, nothing could be done by then. Well, yes. And then the local oncologist said that if you'd turned to a traditional doctor right away, there would have been a chance to save him. Yes, yes, of course, they always say that. But that's God's will, and we must reconcile with God, Kira. Yes. You reconciled, and Vasya... Do you know where he is? He's in the city at work. Where else could he be? Do you want to wait for him? Oh, no, no, of course not. That's a pity. Would you like to have some fruit liqueur? It's homemade, no. a very good one. Thank you, I don't drink. Too bad. But I'll have some. It's good for the arteries. And also for my nerves. Vasya worshipped his grandfather. He really went through a challenging time after he passed away. He suffered in anguish so much. He even decided to stop seeing you after that, though he was really crazy about you. Have some tea. Have some jam. Yes, thank you. Can I ask you a question? Yes, Kira? Your father died on January 17th. Huh. And one month later, on February 17th, somebody killed Pavlovna. What do you mean? Why, who would do that? It's not known for sure yet. They're looking into it. After that, on the 17th day of each month, somebody strangled fortune tellers and mental healers. What are you trying to say, Kira? I'm not, I'm not really certain, but I guess your son is not completely mentally sane. And the police came to me, and not just me. 
Asking about the events around the death of Grigory Matvevich? That's impossible, Curet. It can't really be true. Listen, Maria. If we have a chance, and I don't know how we'll do it, we have to try and save his life. What are you doing here? Well, why did I go to that witch? For what? To bring him back to me? As if I were a wardress or a sadist. Do you know how he sees me now? How? As the enemy. As if I were to blame for something. And what am I supposed to do? I can't understand, really. Was I to sit there while he was cheating? Or wait till it ended by itself? In fact, I can't bear it anymore. Let him do whatever he wants. Let him live with whomever he likes. Let him go wherever he prefers. I, I really can't stand it anymore. Well, good. Did you decide to dump him? Go on, girlfriend. Go and dump him. It's only that such men don't grow on trees. Somebody will pick him up. I went through it a thousand times. Oh, look who's talking. You dumped your Eric. That's why. Are you off your rocker? Who dumped him? On the contrary, I found a lawyer for him, the most expensive. He said he would get the guy out of prison come hell or high water. You... What? Ha ah! Ugh. <laughs> Mom, a slipknot, really? Seriously, how could you believe that your son is a murderer? No. <laughs> That's the hammer of witches. Thousands of people read it, hundreds of thousands, and... Are they all killers, Mom? No, I don't believe it, no. <laughs> it was not me who made this up. <laughs> You're both mad, both you and Kira. Kira as well, you know. All the murders happen on the 17th, son. So what? No other event fell on this date, did it? Only my grandfather's death? <laughs> Mom, do you know the word coincidence? Sure, sure. Forgive me. <laughs> Come My on, head Mom. is spinning. That's nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you go to the police then, I wonder? Silly me. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh, I'm crazy. Oh, Mom. I have nobody left. Only you. That's it. <laughs> mom. Forgive me. I'm leaving. Bye, Mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you like something to eat? No thanks, I'm good. Maramalia, hello. This is Arena calling, do you remember me? Well, it's about my husband. I desperately need to see you. Well, okay. Let's make it the 17th. I have time at two o'clock. 
Does that work for you? that the door was closed. I found it strange, as she always gets up at the crack of dawn. I go and I knock, but she doesn't open. I went around the house, looked through the windows, and then I saw both of them. Their eyes closed, their faces okay. blue. <laughs> okay. Sign here, please. Yes, here. thank you. Thank you. Go. He was seen late yesterday in the afternoon. He hasn't shown up to work since. Thoroughly heated and closed the flap too early. Carbon monoxide poisoning. He came a bit late. Please explain to me why you didn't tell us about Vazia earlier, huh? He was your lover, right? It was you who recommended Garshev and his family to turn to the psychic healer Ilya because of his grandfather's illness, right? Right. And why did Vazia split up with you after his grandfather's death? And killed Ilya and another 11 people? Easy. And when you learned we were suspicious of him, you rushed to his mother, thus killing her and her grandmother. No, no, I didn't know anything really. You must understand that you're partly to blame here, as you may have already guessed. No. I lost sight of him. We didn't see each other until you came and started asking questions. I couldn't ever imagine that she would be killed. Well, everybody said it had been an accident. I didn't know anything, really. This doesn't repeal Article 316 of the Crime Code. Concealment of grave crimes is punished for up to two years in prison. Stop that. You must understand that that's not the worst thing. The worst thing here is that... You might be the next victim. He's covering up his tracks. You understand that. Where is he? You know his acquaintances. Where is he hiding? I don't know. I really don't know. You can take my word for it. I don't know. Tomorrow is the 17th of February. <laughs> Where is he? May I have your passport, please? I handed it in for registration. I sold my flat and I haven't moved into the new one yet, so... I'll have to live undocumented for a while. Oh, please. Really, I can't sleep at the railway station. Well, good luck then. Thank you. You're welcome. So far, Colonel, we haven't found anything connected to the murder at Garshev's house. Kira seems to be telling the truth as well. 
Looks like she really doesn't know where Vasya is now. Well, yeah, she can be very persuasive. My grandmother, Aravik, told me that once there lived a madman who lived in their village. So what about Kira? We suggested she stay with us, but she refused. We took her home and left the guards there. So far, everything's quiet. I don't think he'll go there. Yet. Don't touch anything. I'm on my way. Comrade Major? Major? He almost managed to kill her. We called the doctor and she threw a tantrum. How are you feeling? What, were you sleeping? Major? Comrade Major? We were sitting here. She goes and starts yelling. We ran in here and he jumped out the window. We ran after him, but he vanished. Go to the guard chefs. Check everything there. Well, yesterday we... Do it again. He could have left something there. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, sure, I'll take the necessary steps. So where is that slacker? Close the door, I'm No, leaving. he's here. Come here, come here. Have a look at your golden boy over here. Do you want to know what he's been up to? What? He's been skipping school for two weeks in a row what? already. His homeroom teacher, Vera, just called me. Talia, right? is what your yeah. dad's saying true? Well, I was going to go to school, but I was really busy. Oh, you were too busy? The college entry exams are around the corner and you were busy. Well, tell me what you were so busy with. Well, the puppets took a lot of time. Are you crazy? Oh, the puppets. That explains it. You know, I'd understand if it was girls, but puppets? Come on. Victor. Dad, don't worry. I'll pass They're the exams. They're yours as well, not just mine. Got it? It won't even matter if he passes the exams because they're not going to let him take oh, them. please. So is that what Vera said? Do you think I'm going to help you get out of this? No such luck, buddy. You'll go to the army and stay as long as it takes. Victor. Victor what? As if my own problems weren't enough, now i got to deal with this? Dad, I'm going to study to be a puppet artist, and they don't give a damn about these state exams there anyways. A puppet artist. Enough. I don't want to hear any more about this. You play too much with your damn puppets, like a girl. <sighs> well, talk to your son. Talk some damn sense into this kid. I'm running late. Have you heard everything? That's good. Yelling like that makes no sense. Olga, you finally called. I am so happy to hear from you. What happened? Did, did you change your mind? Victor, you know, I cooled down and... I thought that a child must have a father in his life. A child needs a father. Do you mean to say that... Yes, Victor. Yes. <sighs> Go somewhere. I don't know where. Get something. I don't know what.
Mina. Hello? German, listen to this. I think I found something. Got it, got it. Check her address. Do it quickly. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Yes, now I don't know what I'm going to do with this happiness, but I hope together we will figure it out. Of course, of course, honey. I'm such a fool. I love you so much. I love you so much. Why haven't you brought your suitcase then? Well, it's just impossible. If you were five minutes late, it would be another thing. I'm really sorry. It's Friday today. Traffic jams are something unpredictable. I understand traffic jams, but your time is up. Another client is coming in five minutes. Best I can do is check if I can schedule you for next Please, week. Please, madam, I really need you to help me today. I can wait as long as you need me to. I don't understand anything. What happened? Well, in a nutshell, could you undo everything? What do you mean? Well, could you reverse the spell? Yes. Apartment 35, got it. What's written there? Did you say 3 o'clock? Okay, I'm not far from there. Maybe I'll manage it. Call this witch. We've got to warn her. I'm calling, but she doesn't answer. Maybe she's busy with a client and silenced her phone? What do you mean, reverse the spell? Are you kidding or what? Is it impossible? I didn't say impossible. I want to say it's more difficult, exponentially. Let's do it this way. I'll pay you any sum of money you want. My goodness, what has happened to you, hmm? Oh, that's the next client. Mind you, he's right on time, huh? Please. Okay, that's his first visit. Maybe I'll do away with him quickly, and I'll have some time left over for you then. Go there, go. Enough. Go and read this. Thank Stay you. here until I call you. Thank you. Coming, I'm coming. Hello, madam. I have an appointment. Yes, I see your grief. I know your misfortune. Come in. Listening to you. What do you mean? You brought so much evil. But the day of reckoning has come, which <sighs> I warned you, but you didn't listen. So from now on, I'll be your confessor so that you could save your soul. That's crazy nonsense. Listen, I don't have time for games, so please. <clears throat> Thank you. 
quiet. quiet. If you start screaming, I'll have to seal your mouth again. And in this case, you won't be able to repent and save your soul, okay? You better tell me the truth. Because if you lie, you will only aggravate your fate on Doomsday. Do you confess that you're a witch? Tell me the truth. I'll tell you everything. Let me help. Here. Yeah, like that. Like that. Careful. Careful. Good, good, good. I'm not a witch. Untie me. Untie me, please. I'm a quack. I deceive people. That's my truth. I'm fooling them all. What kind of witch do you think I am? We're all civilized people. We understand each other. So you don't want to confess? No. I understood you. It's the devil. The devil seals the ears of his ministers and whispers lies into their ears. In their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt walk upon the asp and the basilisk and trample over the dragon. So are you gonna confess that you're a witch? When did you first meet the devil? A year ago. Did you enter into some written agreement? Yes, 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 I signed it. I signed it. I signed How everything. How many people did you ruin through your witchcraft? Ten. How many? Well, it was twelve. Now remember, twelve. <laughs> did you trick terminally ill people? Yes. Did you participate in Black Sabbaths or other masses? Yes, yes. Did you also kill babies in the <laughs> womb? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, God. Pray unto God, for he takes pity on your soul. No, no, please. What happened? Alia, what's wrong?
Sorry. From the fifth floor. From that witch, I guess. Boy, where's the fire? It's the police. Where are the firemen? I called the firemen, but the police came. Don't be so upset, my little psychic. You can't blame yourself for this. Didn't you manage to look into the future and predict this before you opened the door? Enough, yes. Well, of course Dermot isn't the greatest police officer, but why break a chair on his head? Shut up. The situation is gloomy enough. Somebody even called the fire brigade. By the way, who taught you how to shout fire in such cases? Do you know that if you shout that they are killing you, nobody will help you? She did exactly the right thing. You're a heroic woman. Is this him? Uh-huh. No doubt about that. Don't worry, we're gonna find him. This guy right here is a legend. He tears criminals apart with his teeth. Then there's nowhere to hide. Answer it or turn it off. Hello. Hello, Victor. Hello. No, no, it's just that... What? I can't really talk right now. I'm in a meeting. Mm -hmm. mm. I wonder what's going on. Hey, are you okay? Yes. Irina. Irina, please look at me. It's all over now. You understand that? You're right, it's all over now. It's true. It's settled. We are going to Shanghai together. <laughs> Almost three of us. Even better, even better. They wanted to meet my wife. Well, this is my real wife. The mother of my future child. Victor, are you sure? Your sudden change of heart scares me a little. Honey, what are you afraid of? You said it yourself, love means taking actions. I made a decision, and I'm acting, huh? <laughs> Only now that you found out that I'm pregnant? Oh, come on, what are you saying? There used to be two of us, you and me, and now there are two of you, and you weigh a little more. What about your son? Son? Tolia? That's easy. He's a grown-up already. I guess he'll be telling me he's getting married soon. And your wife? You know what? I'll be coming back here with my belongings tonight and... And? And I'll tell you how it all went with my wife, if you want. Yeah? It's okay, my little sagacious lady. You'll live, but not for long. Uh, About 70 years it. maximum and that's it. And now come with me. We're gonna uh, go take a little ride no, to the hospital. No, I don't want to. I'm okay. I don't need anything from you. I'm okay. No, really, go. Uh, Under our supervision, no. it's safer anyway. What if he returns to finish you off? What? It's called an incomplete hit, I mean. Like, an unfinished game of chess. Irina didn't let him finish his dirty business. Now he may want to take his revenge on both of you. You always know how to calm people down, Stepanian. Irina. Irina, thank you, Irina. You saved my life, you know? We're not for you and be dead right now, Alia, it's okay. No, it's not okay. I've had enough of it. The theory of probability doesn't work. You understand? It's the improbability theory that works. It's all improbable. Do you need me for I anything else? Really. Can I go home? No, everything's okay. I can give you a ride. No, no, my car's near the house. Thank you. No, you're not able to drive. I'll give you a ride, please. Come on. Let's go. You better take care of her, German. You must keep an eye on her, otherwise you... Well... Like that. Careful. Here, give me the key. Here. Where's the car? Oh, around the corner. Over there. What am I to do now? What do you mean? Well, your colleague, he said that... Stepanian. Well, he said you must keep an eye on me. He... He was joking, as usual, though. In my opinion, there's nothing funny here. Where's the car? Over there, the red one. Wait, so you also think this man, a maniac, uh -huh. may be coming after me uh -huh. and perhaps also... Take his revenge. Well, yes. Well, see for yourself, Irina. One, you spoiled everything for him. Two, you're an unwanted witness. So there's that. And three? Uh, yeah, three. If he understands that we found his trace, he'll start getting nervous and making mistakes. And that will benefit us. What are you saying? 
Do you want to use me as bait? What are you talking about? You are under the radar, so to speak. Hold on. Do you want to use me to lure him? That's how you plan on catching him? Irina, stop that. Irina, 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 look me in the eye. I'll take care of you as if you're the apple of my eye. After what you did today, I won't leave you for a moment. And that's a promise. It's not necessary, really. I'm sorry I struck you with the chair. It's nothing. Get you off my hands, just to be on the safe side. No, thank you. You don't need to go any further, thank you. What if this guy is waiting for you there, yet he can't be there? He doesn't know anything about you so far. I'll call the guys from external surveillance, and you don't go out without telling me. You need to understand this is serious. I understand. I saw him. I tried calling you today. I couldn't answer. I'm sorry. I really couldn't. I wanted to say that... Are you going somewhere? No. Well, yeah. To China? Yeah. No. I... I need to leave. For how long? Well, forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess a day like today couldn't just finish in a good way, right? Make sure to stay close to the house, stealthy, and keep your eyes on the entrance. And remember, guys, you stake your life on her. That's it. I'm really guilty. I screwed up with you and with Tolia. <clears throat> By the way, Tolia, we need to tell him somehow about this. Right, well, everything will remain as it is, and I'll cover all the expenses. For sure. <sighs> I just felt like I had to tell you right away. <clears throat> well, that a woman showed up in my life. Well, she didn't just show up. She was already a part of my life. This woman. Irina, what are you doing? Have you taken the ties? I can't find them. Did you hear what I just said to you? Yes, sure. Another woman showed up in your life. Well... Well, why are you so quiet then? I'm not quiet, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. But you don't hear me. By the way, this suitcase has a broken handle. You better take another one, the one that's not broken. Damn it, Irina, please stop it! Do you think that this is easy for me? 
Well, it's not, okay? Do you remember how he went to Milan? Yeah, I do. We walked around those small squares. Irina, please don't do this. Come on. Found the little street. They were selling delicious ice cream. Do you remember? Do you? Irina. What was its name? Via... Via Manzoni. And to the right of the cafe, there was a small shop selling men's clothes. I bought you a wonderful suit there. Did you take that one? Are you kidding me? No. What's wrong with you today? My husband dumped me today. So send Garcia's profile to all services, including customs and border control, in case he decides to flee. Uh, I don't think so, Colonel. How is the fortune teller? She's in the hospital with guards. And the one that struck you with the chair? <sighs> yes, Colonel. Her name is Irina. Okay, so how's Irina who struck you with the chair? Her house is also under supervision. The external surveillance is working. I advised her not to leave the house. She'll have to, because of German Ivanovich. Mm, no way. I don't think so, Colonel. Do you imagine how stressed she is after what happened today? What do you suggest? How will I catch this madman, Danilov? He's sure to try to finish her, to our benefit. And since we know who his next target is, we can trap him in the snare. Really, Colonel? When my grandfather went to hunt, he did the same thing that this guy... But to risk a witness's life, Colonel. If Garshev hadn't decided to flee, he's apparently somewhere around her house, waiting for the right moment to take his revenge. And here we are, with the bait. But we could put Irina in a dangerous spot. And we need to find this monster, come hell or high water. The bosses are pressing me. They say we must catch him. And don't be too long. German Ivanovich. <sighs> yes, Colonel, I understand. And let me go on record saying that if something happens, I will follow protocol and protect our witnesses' safety at all costs. Stop being such a bore. <laughs> Victor? Victor? Irina, good morning. I'm, I'm sorry for this intrusion. I met your son this morning. He's a good boy. He didn't want to let me in. I barely managed to talk him into it. I had to introduce him to all my bosses. How do you feel after what happened yesterday? Did you sleep well? Like a log. You're kidding. That's good. Let's have breakfast, then. I played the role of housewife today. Do you mind? Not at all. What time is it? Ten-something. My god, my head feels twice its size. I took so many sleeping pills yesterday, I don't have any sense of time. I understand. I feel the same. 
Is it because I... Yes, that's because you hit me with a chair. I'm kidding. Enjoy your meal. No, 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 no. I don't feel like it. Can I have some coffee? As much as you please. Listen, why are you doing this? Irina, frankly speaking, I... I need to discuss something with you. We really need your help. We have to lure him into a trap. What do I have to do with that? You see, surveillance cameras on a neighboring house last night captured a man who very much resembles our friend. Most likely he knows where you are and is waiting for the right moment. In short, we need to lure him here, and to that end, you must leave the house. Wait a second. Yesterday you told me not to go outside under any circumstances. I did. You said I needed to be protected. I did. And you promised not to put me at risk, remember? I won't. I said it. I promised, and I keep my promises. Well, what do I have to do? Hello? Irina, are you nuts? Why did you scare me like that? What happened? What happened? I've been trying to reach you on your cell phone since last night, and you won't answer. Victor is unavailable. What's going on? I was going to go to your place. And yes, hello. Hello. I must have muted the phone. You should have called the home number instead, you know? I haven't called your home phone number in over 10 years. To find that number, I would have had to turn everything upside down around here. Are you alive? What happened? And where is Victor? Listen, it's a long story, and not for the phone. Give me the short version, Arena. Did he leave? Don't be sad. I went through it a thousand times. Sveta, I can't discuss it now. Wait, you're not alone? No. Oh, you. Are you with some man? Great, Irina. Carry on. Sveta, please, let's talk later. Okay. Later. You need to come see me tonight. No, 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 I can't do that. Why? Sveta, well, because I'm exhausted. You must agree. What? What? I'm telling you, you need to come over. We can't miss a chance like this. Listen, Irina, I cooked a delicious meal. Really mouth-watering. Come and tell me everything. No, I can't. You can. We're counting on you. No. Yes. I beg you. My goodness. So you will come. Do it. Well, okay. You should have said that before. I'll be waiting for you. Thank you so much, Irina. Okay, listen up. The character of interest is... Vasya Grigorovich Garshev. He's 6'2", slender, and has long brown hair. This guy's a dangerous special maniac, and he's also a dangerous serial killer. For him to kill somebody is nothing, and that's the reason why you must be attentive and extremely concentrated. Do you understand? Do you think you can do that? Once again. Okay. I'm going to Sveta on a taxi, and I will stay with her until late into the night. Till 11 o'clock. Yes, till 11 o'clock. Then I leave, go in the direction of the metro, through the park, according to the route. Across the darkest path. Of course, the darkest one, clear. Irina, you have nothing to worry about. Our people will be everywhere. He will be hunting the woman who prevented him from committing another murder. Here she is, Irina Solovieva. We are risking our lives for the life of this woman. Born in 1973, is that clear? Do you understand? I'm sure everything will be okay, but... Just in case, Irina, take this stun gun, push this button, and just poke him. He won't be able to move for a while, so you'll have some time so you can run away. But why? You will be covering me. Take it, just in case. How much longer? They've been in there for three hours already. Stevanian, you must know that women love to talk a lot. I know, German. They discuss with everyone, pick them to pieces, take pity on them. Like that, exactly. Moreover, her husband left her. Who? You mean her friend? No, not friend. I mean Irina, the one with the chair. What do you mean by left? Just like, like everybody else. Took his belongings and left. When? Yesterday, when you took her home. The external surveillance reported. I thought you knew about that. Okay, attention. Everyone get ready. Finally. Stepanin, I'm warning you again. Yes, yes, risk our lives for her life. That's right, for her life. Let's go.
attention. Damn it, off the mark. No go, guys. We should stay at a distance, German. Otherwise, they'll see us. Stepanian, do you really want to have her strangled under our noses? Attention, attention. <gasps> I'm sorry. What? What's going on? What, what are you doing? Tolian, hey, you. Where is Marinka? What Marinka? Who are you? That's not him. Right, I was mistaken. Sorry. It's okay. Damn it, it's still not our guy. I told you he had seen us a long time ago. Would you shut up? Don't remove the cordon. Go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, look! A beauty! Quiet, quiet, guys. Quiet. <laughs> Wait, where are you going so late? What are these idiots doing? They're gonna ruin our operation. Let me go. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, tell us. Do you know Mozart? Huh? All right, get rid of these two blockheads, but do it quietly. Okay, stop <laughs> fooling around. No, come go, on, go, wait, go wait. On, scream, I'll scream, scream, okay? Scream. Come on, scream, scream. Oh, okay, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Enough, that's enough. Whoa, stop. What are you doing? Do Guys, let what? the girl go, please. What'd you say? <laughs> Mind your own business, blockhead. <laughs> guys, guys. Are we sharing for three here? What? what a day we're having today. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, stop it. <laughs> hey, man, what are you doing? <laughs> what? Let go of me. <laughs> <laughs> Let go. <laughs> Let go, it hurts. Damn it, it's still not our guy. I told you this isn't going to hey, work. what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Stop. Where's Arena? <laughs> Damn it, I will bury you alive. Where is Arena? Find her! Your girl has run away! Let go, I said! Has anybody uh, walked by? Well, there was a woman, uh, a jogger. Wait, that one wearing the blue hat, and the one in green. Where did the one in green go? Uh, that way. Uh, Stepanian, there, check it, check it! Guys, what are we gonna do with the child? What do you mean? Feed it! Let her go. Uh, Let her go, I said. God damn you! My God, I'm sorry. I hit you with the stun gun. Uh, uh, I'm getting used to that, I guess. Hush. Taking into consideration sincere repentance and cooperation with the investigation, the court finds the accused Edward Gertrikov guilty under the Article 166 of the Crime Code of the Russian Federation of Joyride and charge him with a two-year suspended sentence and release from custody in prison. Sveta. 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 You dumbass. If you do something like that again, I'll kill you. Do you understand me? I swear I'll kill you. Well, you can kill me now, Sveta. What a sleazebag you are. Yeah. <laughs> What a welcome surprise. Hello. Hello. I came to surrender voluntarily. This is because of me. Don't get up. I know everything about you. You have a second degree brain concussion. They're flattering me. There's no brain in my head, believe me. <laughs> I told you I didn't need a stun gun. Well, I am really sorry. It's nothing. I'm getting used to it, ready to take any strokes of fate. Forgive us for having involved you in this. What about him? The maniac. He's undergoing a psychic examination. 
If he's sane, he'll go to prison. If not, to the insane asylum. Anyway, he's not going to see the clear blue sky. That's good. That's good. Help yourself. No, you help yourself. <laughs> I forgot. Here are oranges. Juices with vitamins. This is too much, Arena. You don't have to eat and drink it all at once. <laughs> I won't have time. They're going to release me in a couple of days. Maximum three, the doctor said. Mm. Are you hungry? Mm? Yeah. <laughs> Mom, what's wrong? Mom. Masha, I'm sorry. Can I take a look at your locket? Yes, yeah, sure. I made it out of an earring when I lost the other one. Handmade. It was my father's gift, and I lost it. Do you like it? Yes. Mom, are you okay? What? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Wait. Incredible! Tolia and I have been looking for it for so long. Irina, where did you find it? Where did you lose it? Well, probably... Um... Most likely we... No. No. You come on. Just say something. Maybe we... I know. Mom, just come up with something. It's, um... Improbability theory. It's incredible. <laughs> Improbability theory, a novel by Irina Solovieva, Chapter One. At their anniversary, Ruddick drank too much as usual. And Rita brought her young lover. So in short, you're now calling her agent to politely mm -hmm. ask her when the novel is going to be ready. And then you let me know and I am going to issue her a simple ultimatum. No novel, no money. Is that clear? Yes, go on. Sveta speaking. <laughs> Why are you growling? Nothing. Listen, imagine this crazy Sinstova. 
an author of detective stories, our regular author. She, like Dostoevsky, got stuck in Baden Baden and blew deadlines on her book. Damn her. She's having a crisis. You see? A crisis of creativity. I know this crisis well. Casinos and spa treatments. Maybe you had an influence on her. How can I influence Dostoevsky? I would fire her, but I can't do that. First of all, I have a contract with her. And second, we spend so much on promotion, I can't even tell you, well, the public likes her. They read her novels avidly. Replace her. With whom? I have nothing but trash left. Crying shame. The eternal question. It's clear who is to blame, but not clear what to do. What topic do you need? As usual, a woman's struggle, some razzle-dazzle like that. Listen, Irina. Hold on. You read books avidly. Maybe you know some author, not very popular, but interesting? Well, I think I might know of one unpublished novel. Who's the author? Mm, the author, well, unpopular so far, though you might have heard of her. Irina Solovieva. Ah, you finally finished your opus. Such a pen pusher. Listen, send it to me by email immediately. Understand? Right now, I'm waiting. Deal. I didn't find any oranges on my way here, so... Thank you. You've been discharged, I see. Yes, discharged. <laughs> my doctor said I'm going to get hit in the head a lot more, so it didn't make any sense staying in the hospital. So here you're I am. You're kidding. That's good. Would you like tea or coffee? I'll have whatever you have. Maybe we could have a glass of wine. Is it okay with your injury? Who cares about an injury? Give me a glass. All right. <laughs> To what? Let's drink to our health. A great toast. Mmm. Very interesting wine. Salty. Solovieva, have you gone mad? What type of story did you write? Did you think I wouldn't recognize myself? Do you mean to say I dress like a parrot? and act as a battle axe? An Etic is such a whiner, Victor is a wet blanket, and lacks all the character in Cocorina. She's a real fool. The audience won't buy a story like this one. In one word, this story is a nightmare. A nightmare. Honestly, I don't like it much myself. Solovieva, are you crazy? Don't you have a sense of humor anymore? This is not a novel. Irina, it's a gem. It's delicious. It's, it's a piece of life thrown on paper. Everything is recognizable. Characters, situations, absolutely everything. You, you, you are, you are a talent. You are a talent. Masha. Yes? Okay for printing. Oh. Hello. Hello. Thank you. I thought we were having a business meeting and we're having a dinner by candlelight. <laughs> yeah. What's up? <laughs> I'm remembering. You remember when I hurt my back and the doctor prescribed suppositories and I was laying there suffering and you came in and said, honey, this is our romantic dinner by candlelight. <laughs> mm -hmm. You look really good. And you've lost some weight, I suppose. Really? <laughs> so how's it going? How's Tolia? Tolia's fine. He has a girlfriend now. Really? Masha. Masha. <laughs> yes, she's great. They're leaving for St. Petersburg to become puppet artists. Well, that's great. Mm-hmm. A lot of news. He has a lot to boast about. Unfortunately, you don't see each other often enough. Well, that's only now. You understand. It's just that Olga is jealous. Really? Is that true? She's not excited about the idea of me seeing you or Tolia, so there's that. What did you tell her today? 
that you were at the board meeting? Good. Well, you know, she's suffering from morning sickness and... Yes, I understand. You must be a very caring man. You are distressed for the woman you love and wouldn't like to worry her. All right, let's get some food. A shared meal mm. makes people closer. Yes. What would you like to eat, fish or meat? Steak, rare. Fine. Did you want to discuss something? Yes, I did. Okay, the thing is, we were offered a contract in Milan in Italy for a year. Congratulations. Thank you. So, we're leaving in six weeks, and I just wanted to cross mm -hmm. my I's and dot my T's, as they say. What are you talking about? <sighs> Irina, I understand how hard this whole thing is. Believe me, it's also hard for me. But you and I, we're educated people. Well, at least we're civilized. <clears throat> and I think that we can solve this in a civil way. What do you want to say? I want to say, Irina, that we need to get divorced. Don't cry, Irina. Please. Irina. You. I'm a scoundrel, I know. Mm -hmm. You. I'm a sleazebag and a scoundrel. Please don't. You. <laughs> you. You don't even know how grateful I am. Do you understand that I've come here to tell you exactly the same thing? I just, I didn't know where to start. How to say such things, and you did it perfectly. It's like, I'm just amazed. I, I don't follow you. Wait, what are you talking about? About divorce. I'm getting married, Victor. What? I'm getting married, I swear. You married? Yes. <laughs> to who? Does it matter to you? It doesn't. It's just, I can't understand how it could be true. Yesterday you didn't have an affair, and today you're getting married just like that? Huh? It was love at first sight. <laughs> Irina, what are you talking about? What love? What sight? That's impossible, Irina. It happens sometimes. Really? Well, I... Uh, I don't understand. What about our son? What about Toya? Goodness, Tolia's all grown up already. He's going to get married soon. He doesn't care about us. And German and him get along great. Oh, it's German. That's great. Well, you are Modestovich, and that's okay. What does that have to do with Lower that? Lower your voice. What does it have to do with that? Calm down, please. I just can't understand how you could do this. How? We separated less than a month ago, and you're already getting married? And you're telling me that? I'm telling you that. Your fiancé is pregnant, and that's okay? What is that? It's completely different. Oh, really? It's a completely different thing. Oh, you can't... Victor, it turned out that I can. Listen, stop lying to me. Why are you lying? You don't have anybody. You're saying this only to make me angry, yeah. And I don't believe you. Do you hear me? I don't believe you. Victor, that's your problem. You can believe me or not. But the truth is that I'm really getting married, and I'm filing for divorce. I wish you happiness, and enjoy your meal as well. Bye-bye. Irina, take this, please. Bye. Irina!